Am I the a-hole for laughing at my mom and telling her it's not my fault she's broke? My girlfriend's brother owns a small cafe and bakery. It's a relatively new place, but I recommend it to everyone who wants a place to go. Everything there is good quality, and it's very cute. It's worth mentioning that my girlfriend and her brother are very close, and my mom knows this. This past weekend, my mom was in town and decided to visit the cafe with a few of her friends. In the middle of the afternoon while my girlfriend is at work, I got a very distressed, angry phone call from my mom, demanding to speak to my girlfriend. I'm very confused, and I could tell that she was crying, so I tried to calm her down a little before I tried to piece together what happened. Once she's ready, she starts ranting about how terrible the cafe was. She claims that the staff treated her terribly and how my girlfriend's brother embarrassed her in front of her friends. I ask her to elaborate, and she explains that she didn't bring any money to pay because she thought it would be free because she is a friend of the owner. And because she didn't have any money, she was forced to ask one of her friends to pay the bill. To be fair, I found this all a little funny and absurd, so I laughed. Looking back on it, I probably shouldn't have done this, as this really, really aggravated her. She got mad and proceeded to call my girlfriend a terrible person who was never going to be part of the family. I got mad, telling my mom that it's not my fault that she's broke. After that, she hung up. I thought it was fine, but then I found out that my mom left a pretty bad review on the cafe's website, harassed the cafe, and left my girlfriend a string of badly written text messages. I feel bad because I don't want my girlfriend or her brother to suffer because of my actions. Edit. I've apologized to my girlfriend and her brother for my mom's behavior. My girlfriend doesn't blame me, but I still feel terrible. Not today, home. But you should really have a talk with your mother about how trash her behavior was, considering no one had ever said she would get a free ride there. Also, I would more likely apologize to your girlfriend and her brother about your mother's behavior. I'd work on getting her to apologize and take the review down. Yeah, no. I have no idea how she thought she would get a meal for several people on the house because she vaguely knows the owner. I don't think I've even got any free drink there. I've already apologized to my girlfriend and her brother. I feel so, so bad for the both of them. Constant free stuff from small places quickly causes those places to go broke. She was trying to show off and got embarrassed instead. That's a life lesson. They have two friends who have owned restaurants. One friend made it very clear from the beginning that there would be no freebies or discounts for friends. The other gave free stuff and discounts to anyone with the tiniest connection to him. Oh, you're my second cousin's dog groomer's landscaper's wife. Sire, free apps for the table. Guess which restaurant closed during the pandemic because it was too far into the red? Lol, no. Your mom is an entitled a-hole though for assuming she can just get freebies, then be so offended when told to pay up. What adult leaves the house with nothing? Is it not only no cash but no debit or credit card? Maybe it's just me, but I think I have a fiver on me just to take the trash out, just in case. Also, I'm wondering, did mom think just she could get a free coffee and cupcake? Or was she thinking she could bring herself and friends for a free party? I'm wondering if that was why she was super embarrassed. Like she promised her friends, let's go and all get free goodies. She expected both her and her friends' meals to be free. She also encouraged them to order as much as possible. And she was under the impression that it was on the house. Which, even if it was, is still a trashy thing to do. So when the check came and she discovered that she had to pay, it was pretty humiliating and embarrassing. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not sharing the role of mom at Mother's Day with my kid's stepmom? I have two kids ages 11 female and 9 male. Ex and I were young parents and broke up the day our son was born. He married his wife Kate when our kids were 4 and 2 and it's been a wild ride. When X first married Kate, he filed to change our custody plan to 50-50, which wasn't possible before because he worked as a truck driver and was away a lot. He wanted the kids at his house with Kate, even if he wasn't going to be there. The judge rejected it and the custody remained in place for another two years, until he left that job so he could have more time with the kids. Then custody went to 50-50. X and Kate have always referred to her as Mom Kate, but the kids call her Kate. When Cassidy went to 50-50, X asked me to split Mother's Day with them so the kids could celebrate with both moms equally. I said no. I got Mother's Day just like he got Father's Day. It caused some tension, but I had a court order to back me up. 
There has been tension and drama over how the kids refer to Kate, their relationship with her versus their relationship with me, and how I have never accepted shared mom role with Kate. The truth is, I've always felt like she's secondary to me and my ex. Still an active part of their lives, still has her opinions and requests, but that ex had hired the ones who should be dealing with the nitty gritty stuff. Then I found out six weeks ago that ex has asked the kids twice to ask me to let them go to his house for half of Mother's Day. It came up when my son told me that their dad asked them to tell me we needed to talk about Kate being their mom. He asked me what I wanted them to tell their dad, and I said nothing, that I would talk to dad and they didn't need to. X then told me he was surprised they said anything, since they obviously never asked to go there for Mother's Day, and how we always waited for them to say that they hadn't done it either time. I told him not to drag our kids into it, but he told me I was being unfair, that Kate has been around long enough to be seen as their mom too especially as the mother to their other siblings, how we need to start treating her as such. It got worse when two weeks ago my daughter was sick, and she had a school call me instead of Kate. It was ex's parenting time, and Kate should have been the first call technically, but my daughter asked the school nurse to call me. When I called ex after taking my daughter home, things blew up because he was pissed my daughter asked that I be called, and also pissed when our daughter didn't want to go with Kate when she arrived to pick her up. They are saying I have poisoned the kids against Kate by not encouraging them to love and treat her the same as me. And because I have refused to give up the role of soul mom, I shared a role with the other woman who is also their mother. It has become a very tense dispute because I don't see what I have done is wrong. But I guess what they are saying bothers me enough to wonder. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You're not sharing the role of mom. You are their mom. She's their stepmom. She doesn't have the same parenting rights, same relationship, same anything as you. And she shouldn't. It sounds like your ex wants to replace you with her, and it doesn't work like that. He needs to get over it. And if Kate has biological children, she should understand how fair their treatment of you is. Opie, why don't you start asking for ex if you can have his and Kate's kids over when you have your kids? That as their sibling's mother, their kids should be calling you mom too. And therefore, he slash she should get the same custody split as her siblings. Start demanding, vocally, nothing in writing, that their kids have to give you a Mother's Day card too, and share Mother's Day with you, and you should get alone time with their kids to bond and spend time with your family. Like, go all out ridiculous and call them selfish. And when they push back, you can be like, but how is this different? If Kate wants to be my kid's mommy, then I should get to be her kid's mommy too. And be like, See how ridiculous this is? Kate is the mother of her kids, and I am the mother of mine. There's value in the roles we play without demanding to take over someone else's rightful place. I suggest you and Kate get therapy, if you're still struggling with enjoying the role of co-parent and step-parent. Not day home. Your ex-husband is trying to force something that is causing the opposite effect. He is going to end up making your kids resent Kate if they don't already. I don't know if Kate is pushing to have a more motherly role in their lives, but it's not her place if she is. My guess is, she wants children of her own and your ex doesn't want any more, so is using your kids to try to satisfy Kate's maternal desire. They have three children together, ex and Kate. But from the interactions we've had, I do feel like she wants to be mom to modded ex's kids as well. Not day hall whatsoever. Your ex and his wife are doing a great job poisoning them against her by forcing it. If you had a new male partner, I doubt that he would be fine being replaced as dad. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law she's not allowed back in our house anymore and limiting her contact with our son? My wife and I both work demanding jobs. Sometimes my mom comes over to help with housework and sometimes it's my mother-in-law. Since my mom has some back issues, she can't come around as much as my perfectly healthy mother-in-law. So sometimes most of the work falls in mother-in-law. My wife and I don't mind if none of them help us out with our housework, since we can balance it out on our own, but my mom and mother-in-law insist on helping us. A year ago, my wife gave birth to our son, and since then, my wife and I consult the pediatrician to have come up with a perfectly balanced diet for our son. My mother-in-law is not happy about it, and she tries to intervene in how we raise our kid and what we feed him. My wife always tell her to mind her business, but mother-in-law doesn't listen. My mother-in-law and mom take turns watching our son while wife and I are at work. Then a few days ago, my wife had her day off of the week. I went home after work, and my mother-in-law was there fighting with my wife. Basically, she was accusing my wife of being lazy, and not a proper housewife for not always cooking and cleaning for me. 
She was accusing my wife for being a bad mom, but didn't offer any reasons and why she thinks that. I got in between them and reminded my mother-in-law that my wife is not my maid and that we share the housework since we're both working adults. Mother-in-law told me to stop trying to justify my wife and that she did a bad job raising her daughter because she's not a properly trained housewife. Then she started attacking me for not demanding my own mom to do more to help us out and only expecting help from her. I told her we're not expecting help from anyone and that she was insisting on helping us out. But nobody's forcing her just like I won't force my own sick mother to do more than she's able to do. She kept yelling and woke up the baby and then accused us of waking up the kid. I ended up telling her to get out of our house, that she's no longer welcome here if she insults my wife. It will just take our son to her place a couple of times a week to see him. Out of spite, then she admitted she's been feeding our son stuff we don't want him to have in his diet and that she's doing it behind our back because we are stupid to listen to whatever our pediatrician says. So I told her, fine, she's also not allowed to be alone around our son anymore and will be limiting contact. Several relatives of my wife told us we're being the a-holes, especially me since I'm acting ungrateful towards my mother-in-law, who has always helped us. They say I should apologize to her if I don't want to be called as such. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. While I doubt you will be able to continue to feed your son a perfectly balanced diet, you should definitely be the ones who decide what he eats. Mother-in-law is out of line. Yeah, obviously. Someone feeding your child food against your express wishes is a huge problem, and OP is fully justified. But I've never met a perfectly balanced diet that survived first encounter with a toddler. Lol. Hell, my older kid is actually a pretty adventurous eater, who likes lots of healthy foods. But that doesn't mean she ate them all the time, in a balanced and logical way. It may be wrong, but I think that they have a large list of foods that the baby is allowed to eat and they're foods that they are allowed to eat. And they mix and match the food so the baby is properly fed and healthy. I think mother-in-law is just giving the baby non-allowed foods and not giving all of the nutrients slash vitamins every meal. Don't they say give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves? She just did. She admitted she's been feeding our son stuff we don't want him to have in his diet. Your mother-in-law has the syndrome of, I raised my children 30 years ago, so I know even better than professionals. Not someone you'd like to keep around your baby. Taking into account that the way kids were raised 30 years ago wasn't truly how it should have been done. And that now we have just started learning how. Not stay home. It's a clear boundary violation and mother-in-law should apologize for not minding her own business. If she's so adamant that she did a terrible job at raising your wife, then why should you even let her get a chance with your son? And now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for giving my dad an ultimatum? My dad married Jen when I was 10, and Jen had a daughter Lisa who was the same age as me. We did like each other even before dad and Jen married each other. I found her really offensive. She found me prissy and oversensitive. The latter can be true, admittedly. They got married and wanted us to put aside our differences and treat each other like siblings. The problem was, Lisa hated Jen for leaving her dad. Like, hated her. I'm not sure why she actually continued with 50-50 when she hated her mom so much. Even going as far as telling her mom she hoped she would die and get hurt. But she was around every other week until we were 17. My dad and Jen hoped with time things would work out. But I will never ever want Lisa in my life and the feeling is mutual. I got married a couple of years ago and my dad and I fought over my not inviting Lisa. And now I'm expecting my first child and the discussion has come up again. He keeps bringing it up. But I have told him it won't happen and to stop asking slash demanding. We have debated this heatedly. I have told him it's not up for discussion, but he has told me this is family we're talking about. When he said that to me, I told him it's not family. That I actively reject Lisa being my family. That it might hurt him and Jen, but I reject it. I refuse to acknowledge it. I will actively deny it if someone asks or bring it up. They may be married. But it will be over my dead body that I ever treat or acknowledge Lisa as part of my family. He told me that is exactly how Lisa behaves, and that if I feel like she's wrong, I should see how wrong it is for me. I told him it's the one thing I don't care if I'm like her on. She is not and never will be my family, and I will speak that into resistance. I will reject any and all attempt to try and prove she is family, but I don't care about how socially she would be seen that way. He told me he will never stop bringing it up. That especially with the new generation of the family being started, it's important. So I gave him an ultimatum to either drop the subject or risk pushing me away and not being a big part of his grandchild's life. 
My dad is furious I would issue an ultimatum like that, but I feel like this needs to be nipped in the bud. And I will follow through because he is not going to tell my child Lisa's their aunt and hype up this person and the relationship they could have if I would just allow it. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Well done for setting boundaries. It's your life and you don't owe anyone a part in it if you don't want them there. Or they can respect your opinion or wishes slash won't recognize your boundaries. Of course, you get to decide who you keep in your life. Even if she were your biological sister, you wouldn't have to keep her in your life if she's someone you dislike this much. Also, your dad and your stepmom need to see that him bring this up constantly is only making it worse. Not today, home. I haven't talked to my blood brother in damn well 15 years. And the family got the same ultimatum. I can cut everyone off just as easy. Very few things we should be selfish about. But if someone being a part of your life makes you miserable, then they shouldn't be a part of your life. It's that simple. If Lisa is so full of hate, how can your father justify bringing that toxicity into your child's life? And if resentment runs that deeply with Lisa, you have every right to ensure the safety and well-being of your child. Take care of yourself. Sounds like the dad's still trying to pretend they're one big happy family. I'm sure that didn't help things in those seven years they grew up together.